Hello, everybody. I'm Gaylene Gray, Assistant Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at McMaster University, and I'm very thrilled today uh, to have my guest Janelle Hines with me. And Janelle is our December McMaster Women in IT change maker and I'm really excited to have her join us and I want to say a huge congrats congratulations to you Janelle for being our uh, women in tech change maker for December joining uh, an illustrious group of individuals and carrying your own amazing experiences into this conversation welcome thank you so much um, I am really excited as you know alumni of McMaster. I am always so excited to still get to represent McMaster um, and to get the email saying that I was being featured as the change maker. Honestly, it was like a very sweet moment, especially I think with everything going on right now. I remember I was having a bad day and that was kind of like a nice bright moment for me so thank you i love that and that's great if you can bring if we can bring you some brightness that's great but being able to talk to you today is uh adding to my uh day and, and bringing brightness to me as well janelle and you know i think um what's really interesting is we've we've brought a bunch of people into this uh, initiative um, to recognize their amazing accomplishments as McMaster women in IT and uh, change makers. And they've all had very different roles. And so we've had um, we've had somebody who is on our board, we've had a professor, we've had staff members, and you are an alum of Mac. And I love what you just said, that you still get to be part of it because once a Mac person, all is a Mac person, correct? So tell us, tell us a little bit about your time at McMaster, just to set some context, and then we're going to get into some of the exciting things that you've been doing. Yes, yeah, so I am the class of 2015. Uh, I was in the bio electrical and biomedical program uh, for engineering. It was really funny because you're about to, I think one thing that anyone who goes to Mac or has gone to Mac knows that everything is short formed. Yes. You always have to remind yourself not to use the short forms. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, you know, and I even can think back, so I do a lot, I can explain where my journey is now, but, um, you know, I do a lot of work with youth and talking to them about, you know, them figuring out their career paths. And I always talk about, I remember when I went to, uh, when they had like fall open day um, and coming and visiting campus and listening to, the engineers talk about their program and there was just something I was like this feels like hope this feels like somewhere I'm like mm -hmm. as an engineer you know you're gonna spend four to five years um here and I, I'm so happy I chose my program um and specifically I chose electrical and biomedical engineering uh, because very from young I was that kid that loved technology um I tell sometimes a story about I remember I was like seven eight and there was like the portable radios and I decided to take it apart oh. without fully understanding the concept of electrocution. Um, so I was still turned on. Um, but you know, I always wanted to know like how these things work and looking at circuits, having no clue what the, you know, what the word circuit was, but just being like, what is this thing? How does it work? Um, so very much from, I think, a young age, realized I wanted to do something in the tech field. Um, and kind of as I got older, went through high school, realized I also wanted to have a social impact. And knowing that McMaster was set up where um, they really want engineers, we talked about engineers being change makers of the future. Um, I really found like a great home at Mac. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my time at Mac. And I, I don't know if you want me to get into kind of what happened after I graduated. Well, I think that's really one of the reasons that we wanted to uh, honor you as part of our program because, and you know, you even use the terminology change maker. You had a, a pretty interesting vision for yourself going into uh, the program that you chose at McMaster. And while you were at McMaster, you really did start. I mean, this is where the engines got started. Let's let's talk a little bit about that because you have done some amazing things. And of course, that's absolutely, we wanna hear about what you've been doing since you graduated, but tell us what the springboard was that got you from there to where you are now. How did, how did that come about, Janelle? Sure, so I was involved in a lot of different clubs, both at Mac in general. So um, for example, Macaws, um, which is the Association of West Indian Students, but a lot of clubs involved within engineering. Um, so like the women in science and engineering group, um, I tried, you know, some of the more competition. So I was on formal SAE, which was definitely intimidating because you're like, I know very little about cars for that. Um, but there's kind of the, 
my my baby when it comes to McMaster is uh, Delta Hacks. Um, so I had attended um, a hackathon put on by an organization, and I realized I was like. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, a hackathon is a, especially from when you talk about the university college realm, it's 20, a 24 to 48 hour competition um, where, you know, students have the opportunity to either make a website, an app, or, you know, something robotic. Um, and I realized that this was such a great learning opportunity, um, you know, it's super intense but it kind of forces you to just be like, okay, I'm imagine taking studying for all your exams, but like in a couple hours, like do that. And like, here, can you make a whole app in a couple of hours? Um, I really love the idea. So I actually started um, at first was an organization called Hack at Mac, uh, which still has, it's kind of like two separate, um, but coincide in groups uh, where we would actually travel um, to different uh, schools to, uh, you know, go to different hackathons. Um, even on campus, we would, I remember at that time, a lot of people didn't know what GitHub was. And I'm like, people stopped saving your code online um, or in folders with like, you know, version one, version two. I was like, you should be using GitHub. So we, we taught it to ourselves and then would teach, um, you know, we would have night code nights where, you know, students would come in and we would teach them um, these different skill sets. Um, but it was very much with intention of saying Mac, We'll have a hackathon um, and we came up with the idea of delta hack so like the delta symbol i realized <laughs> the delta symbol being for change uh, so we were one of the first student hackathons with a focus on uh social innovation um and now we're going into i think the sixth or seventh year now wow. um when i already know the team is working hard and they're going to be you know taking the hackathon virtual this year so i'm really excited to see what that's what how that's going to be um but it's been amazing to see now um, how many students have come through Delta Hacks and um, kind of inspire them to realize that in one weekend, um, they're able to take, you know, all the skill sets they're learning in class, you know, add on and enhance those skills, but also get to give back um, to, you know, both the McMaster community, but also uh, we've partnered with organizations in Hamilton, like um, the, uh, one of the food banks, um, and actually created some software for them. Amazing. That's fascinating. And I love the way you talk about the connection and, and inter intersection of technology, IT, and, you know, all the great tools that we love and, and have become very uh, dependent upon, especially over the last uh, eight to nine months. Boy, what would we do without technology? But that idea of taking skill sets and, and that technology mindset, but turning that into social innovation, doing things for good, using your powers for good. And I think that's fantastic. And I mean, you really have um, a vision for your work and your contribution. And that's parlayed into the work that you're doing now with your um, Helping Hands initiative as well. So I when I came to campus three and a half years ago, um, I remember hearing about Delta Hacks. So you have had a long impact on Mac, as you already know. Um, but I remember hearing about it. And I think for it was so funny because you sort of assume, well, if people are involved with this, they must still be on campus. But you were an alum at that point and still having a wonderful um, impact on, on your campus and, um, and to, to this day. So that's a wonderful legacy for you. So let's talk then. You, you, you had to graduate at some point as we all do. And uh, off you went into the world. And uh, although I know there's a story about you continuing to uh, be a, a learner, a lifelong learner, I'm guessing. Let's talk about Helping Hands, because I think this is really, it's quite fascinating to me and your energy and the way in which you've been able to take your vision and, and make it into a reality is amazing. So let's, let's go there. Tell us about that. For sure. So I mean, really quickly, I can, you know, I think talking about that whole social impact, because um, people always ask me, like, how did you, you know, go from a biomedical engineer to doing this? Um, it was actually when I did graduate, I went, I worked at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, so CAMH, uh, which is one of the largest, um, or technically is the largest mental health hospital in all of Canada, um, where I really got to use my skills. Um, and I was helping several different doctors um, use technology for their research projects, including projects that were using VR um, to create an apps um, to help, you know, youth navigate mental health. Um, but on the back of my head, while I was um, at Mac, there was a problem that um, for any student that graduates from an Ontario high school, they have to do 40 hours of community service. And 
I remember coming to Mac and something about the problem, you know, that problem that I experienced and saw my peers experience in high school that I kept starting asking students around Mac being like, okay, where did you live? Where did you come from? How was your experience with this? And I, that's the thing I got to say I loved about Mac is I met people from all over, not just the province, but the world. And I, so I got, I got all these different experiences and just realized like the common threads. Um, so while I was still in my undergrad and doing Delta hacks. I definitely remember that the last year was very stressful trying to balance school, Delta hacks, and I was starting Helping Hands at that time. Um, So Helping Hands were a platform that helps young people navigate and uh, discover uh, where they can volunteer and uh, give back to their community. Um, And it came from the idea of being like, okay, I've started teaching myself how to make apps. And I know you know, it's one of those things that sometimes when people hear now, they're like, yeah, that's so easy. And I'm like, back then, <laughs> um, this is when, like, I, when I first started making apps, if anyone remembers, like, you know, iPhones were just like the blue screen at the top with like the white background and like Android was like the black background with the gray at the top. <laughs> um, and it was like, you know what? No, like we can figure out an app to help students navigate um you know, this process. And, you know, it was something that I've noticed there's all these threads between Delta Hacks, my work at ChemH um, and Helping Hands, where I really truly believe that everyone has a skill set and that there's a way that they can give back. Um, And, you know, I truly believe as, you know, people who are powering the technology that everyone uses today, there is so much power because exactly as you said, the past couple months, you know, I'm imagining what the difference between, you know, the 1919, 1919 pandemic is versus now. Um, it's like two very wildly different things because of our access to technology. Um, but yeah, so at Helping Hands, um, you know, we started off with the app, but I, I will say I, I realized that there was a lot of support that students needed around it. So we are now um, a nonprofit. Um, I have a staff uh, right now, currently five staff plus um, several uh, co-op students slash interns plus um, volunteers um, where you know we um, do these uh, zoom meetings with youth or one-on-one mentorship and kind of help them navigate their career path um, but kind of another thing is that using uh, we were a very technology first nonprofit which is rare in you know this industry um, because of just like that lack of uh, you know capacity and support. <laughs> So at the beginning of the pandemic, we actually, um, I spent a lot of my March and April helping other nonprofits mm. adapt their technology so they can actually, you know, move to a virtual world. Um, so it's kind of just been interesting to like be able to take all these skill sets and like work in a sector that not too many people in tech, unfortunately, go into. That is really about mentorship. And I know that that's part of what you're doing. You know, there's layers and layers of mentorship and everything that you're involved in really. And I think that's quite fascinating. And for for women who are working in technology, obviously it's not as rare a situation as it might, might have been once upon a time, but we come at things a little bit differently. And, you know, you've talked about a lot of those. Uh, so technology is great, but it's not technology for the sake of technology. You've been looking at how you can utilize that to better people's circumstances or create social change or bring experience to organizations. I mean, I love the story you just told about the not-for-profit that you, you know, not-for-profits that you've helped to to bring up or raise all the boats so that people can uh, use technology to help them achieve what their goals are. So talk a little bit about that mentorship piece because you're you're still an individual who's um, at the earlier stages of your career, you have an opportunity to go in all sorts of different directions and you're already mentoring people. And, and talk about that and what that means to you, please. Sure, so you know, one thing that I guess I love, a word that I love to use is the word sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, is mentorship. So I remember hearing it a couple of years ago and then I was like, wait, why do we always talk about this? Like, you know, uh, so for anyone maybe not familiar, um, the way I kind of define mentorship versus sponsorship is mentorship is like, yes, that person that's going to um, give you the advice, help you, you know, navigate the sector. But a sponsor is someone who's actually going to open the doors for you and kind of if they hear about certain things, be like, hey, you know, Janelle, did you think about this? Um, you know, no, and I think because I was kind of going into these different fields, it was kind of hard to find a single sponsor, but I can think of there's all these people along the way that have been like, Janelle, do you think about this? Or Janelle, you should check this out. Um, and that's been really supportive. And I even think about my time, you know, um, at McMaster. So I, like quick story, 
Um, when I wanted to do Delta Hacks, I found out, so uh, the Dean of Engineering, um, Ashar Puri, was going to be speaking at an event in Waterloo, and I happened to be in Waterloo at the time. And I was like, I'm going to go and confront him at this event and be like, hey, my name's Chanel. Um, I have this idea. And I remember being so nervous and I thought he was going to be like intimidating and not, you know, when I hear anything, he's like, yeah, this sounds good. Set up a meeting, you know, uh, with me. So I uh, went back to campus, had a meeting with him and I came in so prepared. I had this whole like speech ready um, to ask, you know, the university for money. And it wasn't even like a three minute conversation. He's like, Chanel, I love this. All right. Um, just like, I might think no, and we'll sign a check. And I was just like, wait, but what? I have a whole speech ready. <laughs> um, and I always tell you my like, story. <laughs> I was like, I'm so ready for it. And he, he's just like, oh, I love this idea, you know. And I think that's how it's so important. When we talk about, you know, sponsors, I think a lot of times we think of these like outside people, but I think there's all these people sometimes that are close to us and do all these little small things that really um, help us. And I can imagine, you know, I've gone to him other for other times being like, hey, I'm having a problem with this. Like, what do you think about this? And he's like, you know what, I'll get down to the bottom of it. Um, and I think those people are just so important because I can, you know, being able to do Delta Hacks gave me this huge um, sense of confidence because I had to build a team. Um, you know, we raised over $30,000 in a matter of only a couple of weeks, which was very intimidating as someone who's never even done like the girl guide cookie, you know, fundraising. Um, but having, I can think of all these like supportive figures that I had during my time at Mac um, and just so grateful uh, for that. I think that's one of the reasons why I also love to give back um, is knowing that I've had people that have helped my career and um, whatever I can do to try to help, you know, young women. Um, so a lot of my work, um, and I do my work within Helping Hands, which is actually cross sector. So it doesn't matter what field a youth is, we'll try to figure it out. So a lot of times I'm learning about fields I know nothing about in order to support them. Um, but a lot of my work is within, um, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in the, you know, STEM field in general. Um, and it's so amazing because I have so many young women that reach out to me being like, well, I have this idea, or do you think I should do this? Or and I don't really know, you know, if I should do this or, you know, my class, I'm the only, I'm one of like two girls in physics. Like, I don't really know if this is my path. Um, and I think it's sometimes it is difficult and why I think it's important for us that have, that are in the field to make sure we are giving back. And there's so many organizations um, that are out there. And, you know, I think one thing that I would you know, love to say, say to anyone listening to this is that I think a lot of times we think mentorship or sponsorship has to be something that's going to be like 10 hours a week of your time and sometimes it could you can determine what you know you want that relationship to be so if it's like hey I only have time to send emails back and forth then that's something you can do um, you can kind of set out the terms of what you want your mentorship or sponsorship to be and sometimes it's as simple as you know I remember um, one young woman we were at an event and the CEO of a health tech company was there I was like you should reach out to him and she's like no so I sat down helped her write the LinkedIn request and he accepted and then she got to have an interview with him. Um, so I think it's so, it's sometimes just the very small things that you can do that can support, um, you know, women or other people that are, are marginalized in, you know, this industry. That's a great story and a great example of, of being a change maker um, with, with people because you're changing people's lives and changing their perspective of themselves and changing their, mindset around what's possible. So congratulations on that. I think that's, um, those are the kinds of experiences and um, outcomes that, you know, you look back on and you think, oh, that's really wonderful, especially when you see someone succeeding and moving forward in a, in a desired whether it's a career path or a learning path or what have you. So you've, you've learned that really well. And I 100% agree with your comment about mentorship and sponsorship and they can interplay, but that ability to really amplify someone's knowledge, capability, competency in a way that's going to allow them to um, develop and grow and expand is, is fantastic. So congratulations for that. So being a change maker, I mean, it's an interesting, you've been a change maker because you knew that that was part of your role as an engineer at McMaster. So I, I love that. Um, you're, you know, you've already been such a change maker in all the things that you're doing and, you know, you should be really proud of yourself. I think it's fantastic to hear your story. What does it, but what does it mean to you um, 
that title of change maker. I mean, this is, you know, our initiative is a small initiative compared to a lot of things, but the, but the fact that, you know, do you think of yourself as a change maker and, and, and what does that mean? I'll say at first, it's one of those things that uh, I think growing up, you know, women are always told, like, I think there's a lot of society puts a lot of pressure on us not to always be proud of our accomplishments. Uh, I remember the one accomplishment I was very proud of was this engineering ring. Um, one of my favorite profile pictures is me standing in front of the uh, engineering ring, um, you know, in front of G uh, GHE. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I remember... I think so. I guess one thing is like Mac has a very strong, I think, advocacy, um, you know, mentality. And it's something that I feel like you really don't like you. Yes, you feel it, but I don't think you realize how strong it is until after you leave and you're not in the Mac bubble. And you're like, oh, yeah, not everywhere is like this. Um, and, you know, knowing that, you know, for example, um, McMaster Engineering has the Engineering Society program. That's not something that like basically you can't really find in any other school. Um, and although I didn't get to participate in that program, um, I think I got to like kind of see people do advocacy work, you know, across the different, um, you know, faculties. So when I was graduating, again, I was a person that I did not, I was not the largest like speaker. Like I wasn't a person that very much wanted to speak, um, but I did see a lot of issues. I not saying um, overall with like STEM um, and just seeing like that lack of, you know, um, female representation, but also noticing like where is the indigenous representation um, in this field, um, and even little things like you know I think one thing that I, I've noticed is that we talk a lot about okay let's get women into engineering or computer science, but we don't talk about women in the trades. Mm. Um, so I kind of started being like okay how can I kind of make these little differences you know as an individual. Um, so one thing that I did um, not right away, but like. You know, I've tried to find myself what are organizations either I can volunteer with or, um, or what are stuff I can just put out there um, and have conversations like on Twitter um, and kind of change some people's minds. Um, and I've had the you know, opportunity now to actually talk to um, different governments, so including um, the Canadian government, both provincially, um, nationally, and I've even had the chance to talk to the Prime Minister of Netherlands about women in science and technology. Um, and it's been amazing to like have these conversations and just realize, help them kind of realize what are some things that I think you might be like missing on and thinking about. So um, the trades has been a big conversation I had um, with all levels of the government being like, what are we doing to make sure, um, what are some of those barriers and like, what can you as a government be doing to kind of overcome that? Um, so for me, I think being a change maker just looks at, there's like the advocacy side of work, but I think there's also kind of what you can say there's like the mentorship side and you know I think changing one person's life like that is you being a change maker and it doesn't have to be anything like large scale um I just personally really as I got more and more into it things just kind of snowballed and um you know now I sit on the equity diversity and inclusion um committee at OSPI so the Ontario Science and Professional Engineers and it's been amazing to look at because sometimes people will be like well, like what issues there are. And for example, uh, not me, but another team member looked at uh, clothing requirements uh, within, you know, like thinking about different safety requirements and how different religious uh, wear or like different clothes, depending on, you know, who you are, what impact does that have? So if you are wearing the hijab, like what impact um, does that have on safety requirements? And um, maybe what, what processes do we have that we just never like properly updated? Um, so I think there's so many little things. So sorry about the phone. <laughs> We're just gonna keep talking. It's fine. <laughs> no one ever calls the house phone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it's you know I, again for being a change maker. I think there's all these little things that I think you know people can do. So within your own organization, for example, if you notice um, that exact for example the safety requirements, if someone new comes on the team, technically of no fault of their own, they can never live up to the safety requirements. Like, what can you guys do to ensure, yes, their safety requirements, but it's also taking into mind, you know, religious requirements, for example. So I think there's so many little things that people can do to be change makers. Um, and, you know, the one that I love to talk about is like women around, you know, the table or the boardroom is, you know, if you hear another woman, you know, her idea is being dismissed or like someone else claiming credit for her, just speaking up and being like, no, I think like Lucy said this, like, can we go back to Lucy? Um, and it's something that I remember was one of the first things I ever did when I was in the corporate world, when I had heard um, some women talk about them, you know, doing that around the boardroom. And I was in a very, it was interesting where the 
the junior team were all female, but the senior team were all male. Mm -hmm. um, and it was such a change to see how like we would just sit down there and they would always be like, okay, we're just gonna have a conversation with the seniors. The juniors can just like, like sit and listen. I was like, no, like I was the one person and all the girls would look at me like, Janelle, why are you saying something? I'm like, no, I really don't agree <laughs> with what you guys are saying. Um, and I think, you know, just seeing what a change that made in our team was amazing. I think there's so many, again, little things that everyone can be to be a change maker. I don't think a change maker needs to be the person, you know, standing up in front of government and, you know, telling them that you're not happy with how the state of the status or the, you know, the state of things. I think people can be change makers within like their own organizations. That's a, a great uh, learning that you've had and also really inspiring. Um, you know, you're, you're only a few years, many very invested and uh, accomplished years, but you're only a few years away from um, having been a McMaster student. And I think that's such great wisdom to share with our students on campus uh, and to help people understand that change can come about in, in tiny little bits. It doesn't always have to be um, a massive or big sweeping change. Um, you have to start somewhere and it, you know, every little incremental change accumulates to make real change happen. And, and so that's excellent. Thank you for telling that story um, and those experiences. I think that's such an inspiration for others. And that's really what the initiative that we're um, talking about today or why we've, we've got you here with us talking about today, this um, Women in Technology Changemaker series is to help inspire other people to think about different ways that they can leverage their love or interest or work in technology or that as a potential career path and seeing the array of, of different directions people take it and what they do with it. So I wanna thank you very much for bringing your perspective. It's just been a joy. You really are delightful. You are um, so optimistic and so confident in a way that, you know, confident that we can do better. And, and I wanna thank you for that because I think that's a really important message for all of us. And, you know, I've certainly learned a lot from you today even this short amount of time. Um, you are really an inspiration. So I wanna thank you today, Janelle. I'm wondering, is there anything you wanna say before we wrap up today that you, you'd like to share before we close up? Well, I'll say if, if anyone, uh, you know, has any questions or just, you know, wants to have a chat about women in tech or whatever, feel free to get in contact with me. I realize this has uh, been my Zoom background for the past month. So this is my social media, but if you want, um, my email is just Janelle at helpinghandsapp.com. Uh, please feel free uh, to get in touch and even on advice on um, how you know you, you as a person in tech could support other nonprofits because trust if you are in any nonprofit group there are so many complaints about um, you know the lack of technology and I was actually it's kind of like those small impacts I'm so mad about COVID I was actually going to go to the U.S. for a nonprofit technology conference to hope to bring back knowledge um, here for the Canadian uh, ecosystem. But if, yeah, if anyone, you know, has any questions or looking for ways um, to give back, whether it's financially or with your time, feel free. And I, my brain is a database of different ways you can do that. So um, please feel free to, you know, reach out. Um, and, you know, if you know a, a high school student um, who's looking for resources, you can tell them to follow our, so hard, our Instagram, because um, we post resources every day uh, for high school students, uh, mainly high school and university uh, age students. Um, so, yeah, thank you again so much for having me. And again, I'm a very Mac Inch proud person. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we'll certainly be uh, sharing your story with people to throughout December as our December McMaster Women in Technology Changemaker. And I want to thank you for making the time, a very busy person that you are, and for all of the good work that you're doing. Um, there's just so many exciting things that you've got, and you're so You've got so much more time and so much more to do, Janelle. So, you know, anything that we can do to support you in your journey, I'm, I'm certainly want to offer that to you as well. But hey, if you could come up with a way to stretch and give to more than 24 hours in a day, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep that. I love that you're putting these calls to action into this. So fantastic. That just that in and of itself is fantastic. And uh, you're very motivating. 
thank you so much. I wish you every success and uh, McMaster is super proud of you. And we're looking forward to seeing what you do next because I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Okay. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Thanks so much, Janelle. I appreciate it very much.